on everyone. I'm Jen and I am so glad you're here at RPK Online because we've been digging deep this month and finding out how we can grow in wisdom. Now wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. All of us need wisdom. All of us have to face tough decisions and we need to know how, basic truth, make the wise choice. The great news is we can always ask God for wisdom. He's always there to help us. After all, wisdom comes from him in the first place. So we've been talking all month about wisdom, why it's important to have wisdom, where wisdom comes from, and of course, how to put wisdom into practice. At this point, you must be thinking, okay, I know that wisdom is finding out what I should do and doing it. I know that wisdom comes from my relationship with God because God is the source of all wisdom in the first place. I mean, I know that I can find wisdom when I stop and think, when I ask God for help, and when I surround myself with wise people. And that's all true, but it's actually just the beginning. You see, wisdom is something we have to search for all throughout our whole lives. We never stop growing in wisdom. Now, one person who wrote about that was the Apostle Paul. Paul was a religious leader who knew all of the Jewish laws. He was certain that he knew the right way to live. But then something amazing happened that changed Paul's life forever. Suddenly, Paul's mind was changed completely. He realized that Jesus really is the Son of God. He was so excited, he wanted to tell everybody about it. He traveled around and set up different churches everywhere he went. He shared the truth about Jesus. We'll learn all about that in a moment, but first, Let's watch this and worship together. Dear God, when I decided to be a babysitter to pick up some extra money, I really thought, well, I thought it would be easy. <laughs> It wasn't. After my first job, I was ready to quit. When mom sent me the info for a class about babysitting, I was like, I don't need a class. I've been babysitting my little brother since forever. But after I thought about it, I wondered, what if there were still some things I didn't know? I mean, you don't know what you don't know, right? So I signed up. They gave me a checklist and some great ideas. Now I ask better questions about allergies and what the kids like to do for fun. And I learned to pack a bag with basic cleaning supplies and something fun for the kids to play. I made a whole babysitting kit. Next week, I'm even going to be certified in CPR. After my next job, the family told another one and another one and another one. I have more babysitting jobs than I know what to do with. God, thanks for the opportunity. Help me to keep learning and growing. Love, Laura. Hey, RPK. Our basic truth today is I can trust God no matter what. Now there's a reason to sing wherever we go. Come on, let's do it.
hope you guys were with us at VBS. We did it and we learned it there and I just love that we get to keep on singing it. Okay, so our bottom line today is never stop growing in wisdom. When we put our hope in the Lord, well, he gives us wisdom as we grow. So let's sing this song and worship him. It's called, My Hope is in the Lord. You know it, come on. just so grateful that we have had this whole month to learn about wisdom and how you are the ultimate when it comes to wisdom that you give it to us freely when we seek it from you what an amazing gift and that we can never stop growing in it is something we could take with us our whole lives so thank you for giving that to us thank you that the wisest man in the world that's what he asked for too we love you and we just want to follow you and trust in you and put our hope in you today and it's in your amazing name that we pray amen Everybody, Haley here, and excuse me while I take a quick selfie looking all adventurous. <laughs> there, hope you like it. Getting likes is the most important thing, as you know. How else would you know if you're doing what's right? Oh, oh you do like it. Well, that's great, that's so sweet. Anyway, today we're learning about wisdom. I know, right? I like wisdom too. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Wisdom can help you know where to go, what to do, 
who to be friends with, what to wear. Like this super chic leather jacket. Yeah, some love for the jacket. And how about this hat? Am I right? <laughs> oh, uh oh, that's no good, huh? Well, this is my favorite hat. Oh well, the phone knows what's best, I suppose. How about this one? <gasps> oh, oh good, this one's better. <laughs> I'm always afraid this hat makes my head look too small. This girl I know, Iris, says I have a small head, <laughs> but I guess I'll forgive her. Anyway, huh? what? You don't think I should forgive her? <sighs> well, what should I do? Get revenge? <laughs> you like revenge? Well, are, are you sure? I, I, I don't think revenge is very wise. I thought you were smart, phone. I need to rethink this whole relying on likes thing. And as we'll learn in today's story, there's a whole lot we need to rethink. Oh, be quiet. Back in a minute. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. If there was ever a man who thought he knew how to think the best thoughts, it was Paul. As a Jewish religious leader, Paul knew all the 613 Jewish laws inside and out. He was convinced he knew the exact right way to live. But then Paul met Jesus in a flash of light and thunder and everything flipped. Paul's entire way of thinking changed. Jesus is the son of God. Paul began to travel across the land, starting churches as he shared the amazing news about Jesus. He also wrote long letters, both to the churches that he had started and to ones that he had heard of or wished to visit. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Many of Paul's letters are collected in the New Testament, including a famous letter he wrote to the church in Rome. I long to see you. I want us to encourage one another in the faith we share. In his letter to the Romans, Paul shares the truth about what God has done for us in sending Jesus and how that can change our lives. Romans 12, 2 offers a big challenge. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you. And you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew all about having a mind makeover, but changing your thoughts isn't easy. Whatever you do, don't think about an elephant. Do not think about an elephant. You're thinking about an elephant. It's really hard to control your thoughts. When Paul says, don't live the way this world lives, he's saying, don't let this world push you into thinking and saying and doing things. Imagine that you're modeling clay. Modeling clay can be turned into all sorts of cool stuff, like this, or this, or even this. The problem is, no matter how much you shove it around and shape it, modeling clay doesn't form anything that lasts. And we all know how modeling clay ends up. Mixed up, dried up bits. We can get squashed too when we let the world around us tell us how to act, what to say, what to wear, what to play. We run from one thing to the next without stopping to think about what really matters. That's why Paul reminds us next, let your way of thinking be completely changed. We all know it's really hard to change your thoughts just by trying hard. Yeah, there's only one way to make lasting change, and that's to let God work in your thoughts as well as in your heart. Imagine this is your brain, and throughout the day, it begins to boil with a gazillion thoughts. Oh, why do I have to get up now? I hate school. I can't believe I have Miss Wells this year. She's the most boring teacher ever. 
Everyone else has a better lunch than I do. I can't run a whole mile in P.E. It's not fair I have to finish my homework before I can play my game. You can't make all those thoughts change in an instant, but you can invite God to begin to change those thoughts for you. And as you spend more time focused on God's words written down in the Bible and spend time with others who follow God, your thoughts will begin to shift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Over time, new thoughts will replace the old anxious ones. God will begin to change you from the inside out. Now, you're no longer modeling clay. Instead of being pushed around from the outside, you have a brand new way of thinking. Paul writes, Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. When something difficult happens, you can stand strong and ask God to show you what to do and what to say. And the more you invite God to change what's happening in your head, the more you grow day by day in wisdom. Today's wisdom comes from the Apostle Paul. I think I'll turn you off for a while. You're a smartphone, not a wise phone. The Apostle Paul wrote, don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. A lot of people in the world do things just because everyone else is doing it. But Paul wrote that we shouldn't live the same way as the world. We should think differently. We should stand out even. When Jesus was here, he showed us a different way to live. A way where we don't just like, but love everybody, even our enemies. People were drawn to him because he was so different. And when we believe Jesus is who he says he is, that he died for us and came back to life in three days, the Holy Spirit will help us to change from the inside out. So. If I'm being wise, I'm not making choices based on what the world wants. It shouldn't even be about what I want. I should make choices based on what God wants. And God wants me to love him and love others. But listen, completely changing your way of thinking takes time. It's something you and God will be working on your whole life. So here's the one thing to remember today. Never stop growing in wisdom. Wisdom is a treasure you'll always be hunting for. And while you're hunting, ha, 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 you'll need a cool hat. It's my favorite. I'll see you around. Bye. You can see how important it is to renew your mind and change your way of thinking. When you do, it's like your life is shining with God's wisdom. Is it working? It's not. But if we're not careful, we can start to take our cues from the world around us. Mm, see, it wasn't working. Oh, now it is. <laughs> our minds can be full of thoughts that are all about us and what we want. And instead of finding joy in God, we can try to find joy in other places. That's why it's important for us to renew our minds by talking to God, reading the Bible, and talking to others who help us remember what's true. That way we can continue to grow in wisdom. That's what we need to remember, our bottom line today. Never stop growing in wisdom. It's true. There are times in life when we can start to listen to the world around us and, and that can make us forget what we know is true. But God has given us a way to turn things around. We can renew our minds. We can change our way of thinking. We can find ways to remember how much God loves us and that God is always with us and that we can trust him no matter what. 
It could be that you spend time praying to God, reading the Bible, or, or talking to people who can remind you about God's good plan for your life. Those are all fantastic ways to remember what's true and continue growing in wisdom. And that's something we'll be doing our whole lives. We'll always be growing in wisdom. So let's make a habit of doing the things that will help us grow in our relationship with God because that's what will make us wiser and wiser. We can always look at the way Jesus lived and the way he showed love to others. I mean, people wanted to be with Jesus because he had such amazing wisdom. He knew the right thing to do and he did it every time. Remember that when we ask Jesus into our hearts, we receive the Holy Spirit who is always with us, helping us to make wise choices. We'll be able to live in a completely new way because his love transforms us and makes us want to show love to others. Each day, we can ask God to show us how to live with wisdom. We can ask him to help us love him and love other people. We can ask him to help us renew our minds so that we can go closer and closer to him and more and more like him. So let's take one final look at our verse this month. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. James 1.5. So let's say it together. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. James 1.5. So let's pray and ask God to help us do that. God, thank you for giving us such amazing ways that we can grow in wisdom. Help us remember to talk to you, read your word, and talk to others about you. No matter what happens around us, help us trust you and remember that you love us so much and you have a good plan for our lives. Help us grow more and more wise as we grow stronger in our relationship with you. We love you and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Well, I hope you have a really great week and that you keep growing and growing in wisdom. Time to go dig up some more treasures.